morning. Good morning, crowd. We got a small but enthusiastic live audience today. And today is your lucky day. Did you all know that? No. You woke up this morning saying today's your lucky day. Today's my lucky day. Right. And you said lucky day for two reasons. Not only do you get me, not so bad, right? We got cross country here. So stay with us as soon as I'm done. And I'm not going to be long today. We're going to move on to cross country on the most vital topic in the world. Mortgage financing, house financing. And here's what I'm going to say, because I took this note down. Last night I woke up and I said to myself, we're going to have cross country with us this morning. And I'm going to make a statement to all the people here, all the people at home about mortgage rates and selling real estate, how it relates. Mortgage rates should not stop you from buying a home. Got that? Yeah. Okay. Mortgage rates should not stop you from buying a home, should not stop your clients. This isn't the 1980s. This is 2022. The world has changed. Mortgage rates should not stop you from buying a home. Get that in your head. Right. Okay. You believe that? You, that's how you'll come across because this market right now is a little different than many, 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 that many of you may not have experienced. But some of us gray hairs who've been in this, we've been through this, worse, ups and downs, cycles, non cycles, mortgage rates should not stop you from buying. Now remember that. Okay. Our friends and our mortgage partners at Cross Country will show you why, because this is not the 80s, this is 2024. Okay, good. So the old question is, how's the market? I do this every time we open, how's the market? Well, how's the market? Unbelievable. I know, I know, that's, that's all. But <laughs> look, 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 we, all know where, we all know where we're at. Prices, buyers, inventory, interest rates, sellers, okay? Um, the market, in my opinion, is where you want it to be. Now, we all know what's going on in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the real estate market. The mortgage market has a big effect on home sales. Would you agree? Yeah. Correct about, are you correct yeah. about that? That's because everybody in the whole world is telling you, maybe now's not the right time to buy. Do you think now's not the right time to buy? No, I, no really, do you think? I don't think, it. I think it's probably the best time to buy. And we'll show you that a little bit. So the market is in flux. It's changing. There's a couple of things that we, we have to look at and we have to look at the big picture, which we will in a little bit. So the market is, is not what it was a year ago, but maybe it's closer to the way it was three years ago. So everybody looks at everything in such a small window. So one of the things that we need to do, we need to do is keep calm, Carry on. You've heard that before, right? Just keep calm and carry on. Attitude is everything. Your attitude is everything. Um, I happen to like this type of market. Yeah, I know it's crazy. I, I, the whole market two, two and a half years ago, the last two and a half years was, was nuts. We all know what we went through. Every market has its pros and cons. We all know the market we had for the last two and a half years, what that was all about. Try to get your deal through in that kind of market. Try to get a listing, okay? It was crazy. Every market has its pros and cons. There's a lot of pros to this market for real estate salespeople. And there's a lot of pros to this market for even the buyer, which I'll show you in a little bit. So every market has its pros and cons. This one I like because it's kind of like we're going the speed limit right now. And if you compare where we're going, we're probably like the market in 2019, maybe early 2000, well, 2019, pre-pandemic. It's very close to that, which if you remember, which we probably don't because we don't remember headlines from last Saturday. <laughs> True, but if you go back then, it was almost like this. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of good pros to this market, you know, and we'll, we'll cover that real quickly. So, but your attitude is everything. And that comes across when you're selling or when you're communicating or when you're dealing with people, they sense where, where really where you're at. 
and don't really buy a lot of the stuff that you hear in the media and don't buy a lot of stuff in the media and in the news. But what you can do is, oh, before I get to that. So don't give up because the mountain got a little taller. This market may be a little challenging right now than it, than it once was or the way we thought it was, but don't give up the climb because the mountain got a little taller. Why did it get a little taller? Maybe mortgage rates have changed for now. Remember one thing, and, and, and Joe will go over this, I'm sure, and tell you. One thing's for sure. You buy a house, your price is your price. And that's the price forever. Your mortgage rates can change and always, you can always refinance it and change that. So if you don't like your rate today, wait two years. Or wait three years. And I'll show you what three years waiting will cost you if you want to wait three years. Because that's what people want to do. So we want the pros and cons. I know this is tough to read, but it's crazy. Long Island market, I specifically did Nassau. Nassau County pending sales medium price. Current information. A little tough to see, so I'll tell you. It's still going up. I didn't do average prices. I did median prices. The median price for a home in Nassau County, according to MLS, is $675,000. I thought I'd see a dip. Hasn't dipped. I was talking to a friend of mine from California yesterday. He's ready to blow his brains out. Uh, you know, Bob, oh, yeah. he's telling me how the market is in California. You know, California is always a little, usually leaves the country a little bit, a lot of stuff. He says, Prices are plummeting. I love that word. The prices in California are plummeting. Right. So they're going from Mars to the moon. That's how much they plummet. So he's, the, the market's really changed like that in California. We haven't seen it yet, but it's starting to flatten out. And this is as of, as of September 20th. It's, it's the prices are starting to flatten out a little bit, but believe it or not, they're still going up. Crazy, right? The other part of the market is, this is, this is not correct, is that sold properties are still going up. Sales and prices are still going up. This has changed from the last meeting, which we didn't update this. Listings are down. You know how much listings are down? In the country, they're down about 40% overall. There's no houses for sale basically in the country. The inventory of homes is down 40%. Long Island somewhere down around close to 50, would you say, Joe? At least 50% off normal periods. So that creates all of this. See, all markets, believe it or not, no matter what you hear, no matter what they say, in my, my opinion, all markets are based on supply and demand. Those of you who bought a car, recently bought an automobile, a brand new automobile, Scott, you know the supply of automobiles? Right? Way down. Demand still pretty high. Maybe that's starting to weigh in a little bit. How much over sticker did you pay, Scott? Six what? Six thousand. So that car costs you about eighteen thousand dollars, huh? <laughs> Six thousand dollars because supply and demand. Other people paid more than that. Right. Ten. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's all about supply and demand. All right, and that's what's creating all the market. So there's there's no supply in Long Island really to speak of. All right. It, either either the house sells in 15, 15 days, thirty days. Or it sits around, right? And then what happens? What happens to those listings that just sit around? You got to do something that we haven't heard in a couple of years. It's called price breaking. So I have my phone. I have a lot of websites. You know, I follow different markets in different parts of the uh, island and, and specific markets in, 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 in Jersey. And I get all the alerts for new listings. Some of you may do the same. You do that at all? You get alerts from like realtor.com and other, other, other sites. Mm -hmm. So I get all these alerts and I used to get all these alerts, price increases, price increases, price increases. Now I'm getting all these alerts saying price decreases. Yeah. Okay. And it's kind of fun to see all the prices decreasing. Um, but everything is based on supply and demand. So here's, here's the unique part about Long Island. And I've covered this before. Long Island is an island. 
We can't go north. We can't go south. We can't, it's, it's it. This is all the land we have. And pretty much if you're driven around, you're trying to build on every inch of it. All right. And we speak about cars and everybody has at least three cars. Those of you who travel the LIA like I do. Um, so we can't go anywhere. This is it. We're stuck with this piece of property called Long Island. And that's why the demand is high because you can't increase the supply. It's tough to do. You, you, you see a lot of new developments going on in Long Island right now. You may see a couple here and there, but you don't see anything, any quantity. So the demand is remaining high while the supply is low. All right, and that's what's gonna keep our market strong, regardless of what the interest rates do, regardless of pricing, regardless of a lot of things, this market's gonna remain kind of strong, kind of, kind of, you know, stable compared to the rest of the world. Because when I spoke to Bob, he says prices in California are plummeting. And what he also said, and the reason they're plummeting is because the supply, houses are flooding the market in California. People want to get out faster than you all can get trucks there. And that's the truth. And that's straight from Bob, who's a real estate broker. So we're not going to see that here. And our stats so far currently do not show that. We may see a flattening of prices, in my opinion, but you're not going to see prices plummet. All right. Um, and you're not going to see a flooding of houses on the market. And if we did, I think they'll be absorbed pretty quickly. And if we do get a flood of houses, maybe a 10% increase, which we would think is maybe a flood, it's probably, it's not going to really impact the engine. There's such a demand right now for homes on Long Island that even interest rates at the levels they're at or what you can get them at and perceived uh, levels, people are still going to buy. We'll cover that in a minute too. Because why would you pay 6000 over market value or over list for a car? You, no, you didn't need it. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Okay, so here's the news. You've seen this before. Simple as this. Use the news to your advantage. Use the news to your advantage. This is what people are seeing every day in the headline. They're actually worse than this now because as interest rates go up, the whole world thinks the market's collapsing. Use the news to your advantage. Everyone believes the crash is coming in the housing market. Foreclosures are coming. Yada, 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 yada. All right. When you're talking to home sellers, they see this. When someone has to sell, they're going to sell. Good markets are bad markets. They're going to sell. All right. Those who have been putting off selling their houses now are going to eventually want to put it back on the market and are going to want to sell. And this is what they're going to see. Those who are currently on the market. You have, you have houses listed right now? Yeah. What's going on with them? If you just can share a little bit. I'm getting price breaks on the majority of them. And uh, they're still getting action. They're still having Joe and still doing open houses, paying price. Okay. But you but you break it. So. But the prices are coming down. You're reducing down. the price. Yes. A year ago, would that have sold like this? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Any resistance from the sellers? Mostly were open minded. When you explain to them, they're like, oh yeah, we understand. Uh, and then they make comments about politicians. <laughs> yeah, they get politics. Yeah, no story. I know. I know. I know. We got more great news this morning on that too. These guys will probably tell you later. More great news. Um, but yeah, this is what they, they realize. They realize what's going on in the world. They realize they may have missed the market. They're very realistic today, and they'll take what you suggest. You have a vital role in this whole this whole deal. Your your information and your suggestions and your professional knowledge passed on to your clients carries a lot of weight. They'll follow what you say. In the past, we used to beg for price reductions. Now it's like, you know, getting a getting a 10% a, a reduction in price is not a big deal anymore. Right, Scott? It's That's like, sure. do what you have to do. But use the news to your advantage because they know this, okay? And they realize what's going on. It may not be so applicable to Long Island, but this is a lot of national news that they're hearing. So next time you go, does anybody still go out to dinner? Their restaurant? You still do it? You, got, you still do it? Okay, right? Yeah, not too many. I mean, prices are crazy. 
But listen to the conversations that go on. If you overhear other conversations or you go any place where there's a couple of people gathering at a coffee shop, a Starbucks, somewhere, you'll always hear them talking about what? Yeah, real estate. No, they're talking about their wives <laughs> and, their, and their, <laughs> their kids. They're talking about real estate. It's on everybody's mind. It's all, listen, the economy may be collapsing or plummeting or you know, falling apart, but they always seem to bring up the housing market. And the housing market is in everyone's conversation. Therefore, it's, they know what's happening. They may not know what's happening at the border, but they know what's happening. They know what's happening in, in, when it comes to housing because that's all that's on the news right now, okay? So use the news to your advantage. Um, so I put this slide up to be a deal maker. Anyone know what a deal maker is? You know what a deal maker is? Somebody who would make a deal that wasn't a deal. See, they make it, they, they can create a deal that would never have been created. Okay, because they know what they're doing. Okay, so let's see what's next. So in this market, the best part and the reason I love this market is because I, I like making deals. Selling houses in the past two years took little or no sales skill. All right, and I'm not knocking anybody. It took a very fast car. It took somebody who was Johnny on the spot knew about things right away. But it didn't take it. It didn't take a lot of my opinion. Didn't take a lot of selling skill, did it? And you just threw your offer in there along with every, everything else, and you hope that somebody would take it. And I kidded about that. I kidded about that at the last session we did, and I called them um, um, nonchalant realtors. Remember the nonchalant, if you remember last, last month when they did, I called them the nonchalant realtors. Oh, I wrote an offer. Here it is. I just threw it out there and didn't care about it. You know, that was then. Today, you have to be, in my opinion, if you really want to succeed, one of the things you have to do is make deals. Now, I know that's a crude term because we all like to have transactions. But you have to make deals. Scott made a deal, and I used Scott for you on a, on a house in, uh, I'll, I'll just tell the story real quick. Made a deal, a VA deal, no cash down, no cash down, 750,000, 750,000, zero cash down, $750,000 mortgage. Hmm. Pretty impressive, right? Could you make that deal a year ago? Oh yeah, well, here's our deal. We have a buyer. They have no money. <clears throat> they they want a little less off the. They want something off the price. They want all their closing costs included in the offer. And they have um, thirty six cents to put on contract. And would you accept it? Imagine bringing that deal a year ago. What? Are you out of your mind? They don't have 50% cash. They're not, don't even throw it in there. If they don't have all cash, we're not even going to look. We, none of that. Forget all that. <clears throat> Made a deal, a deal maker. No one could make, no one would make that deal. That deal is going to go to closing next month. VA. VA. You do any VA loans? Love VA loans. We'll love VA loans. We're all worried about the appraisal. Oh my God, it's got to appraise. How's it going to appraise? Oh, it's never going to appraise. It appraised. I was a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to appraise. Oh, it appraised. Oh my God. Oh, they got approved. Oh, it's never going to, how are they going to get approved? Oh, the rates went up two times since they made the deal. Who's going to, you can make that deal today. Talking to another agent yesterday morning. She got a condo listed, $659,000. Been on the market probably 60 days. Guy came in 45 days ago, made an offer of $550,000. Didn't accept it. This is the story I got yesterday morning. The buyer came back to every open house. Love this condo. I love this place. 
my office, like this. I'm not budging. Two more open houses. He was there the prior one and the latest one. Oh, I love this condo. But my office day in at 5.50. Talking to the agent yesterday. The deal was made the day before yesterday. $550,000. Wrapped up. Now they're fighting over furniture. You think this is easy? This isn't easy. They're fighting over furniture. That's a deal. You can make deals today. A year and a half ago, you could make deals. It was hard. You bring your best deal in, gone. Buyers were, buyers were, what were they doing? They were giving up. So you, you have to make deals today. And, and if you do that, you will sell houses because as crazy as it may sound, some of these deals that you think are crazy, those are the ones that happen. When you get, you see, when I used to sell real estate back in the um, early 1800s, you used to pull up in our, no, thank you, a horse and buggy. <laughs> you know, I was upstate New York, I saw people with horse and buggies. Be honest, no. I didn't realize they're up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Real estate agents. Yeah. Little sign on the side of the buggy. <laughs> Amish homes. Anyway. Um, all I cared about was all I, the only qualification I ever gave any buyer, and this may be applicable to today, the only qualification I ever cared about back in the old days was their desire to buy. If they had a desire to buy and I had the cross country guys with me, I knew they'd get along. Crazy. Didn't put a lot of emphasis on qualifying them for a loan because if they had the desire, they'd make the thing, the deal happen. We'd make the deal happen. Okay. And I can give you story after story. Oh, they're a little short on income. Oh, they get money from somebody else. Oh, they need a coal bar. Oh, they find a coal bar. We want the house. Why? Because people buy what they want, not what they need. Got it? I can change this any way you want. <clears throat> people buy what they want. 6000 over list price for a car. You think he needed a car? That car? No, he wanted it. People buy what they want, not what they can afford. Okay? So if you remember this little mantra, I think you'll sell houses today. Even though, you know, because if they're calling up any, any lead you get today, you better be treating it as a top-notch VIP referral type buyer. And are you still getting calls for houses, by the way? People still inquiring, interested in houses? Correct, am I right? It's not, it's not dead. People are still out there. They, they want a house. They're not doing it because they got nothing else to do. People buy what they want, not what they can afford. Crazy. So I don't know, what's the payment on a $750,000 VA mortgage today? I don't know. Let's see, four thousand a month, thirty five hundred dollars a month, more, more, more. Taxes are in the eight grand range. Yeah, taxes. Tax it and deliver. Why get a VA tax deduction? So they wanted it. I don't know, and obviously they could afford it because, but they wanted it. Crazy payments. I don't think the rate was a problem, was it? Never heard about. Never heard a problem about the rate, right? Yeah. You know. So people buy what they want, not what they can afford, not what they need. So, so today, if you get a call from a buyer, you better work them really hard. For everybody out there in Zoom land, every lead is a is a qualified buyer, is a great buyer. The cross country guys will figure out if they can get a loan. Probably ninety eight percent of the time they can. All right. Let them take care of that. You take care of their wants, not their needs. He says he needed a car. He didn't need a car. Probably got four in the driveway. Burn 10 over, 10 over list. Think she needed a car? She leases cars out for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just need a car. 10 over. Because she wanted it. The big thing with the three screens in the back, you know. <laughs> so, 
So the one thing I want you to take away from today when you work advice for ticket, because you'll end up selling houses, is remember this. Don't worry about the price. Make an offer. I represent the seller. What are they asking? I always quote asking price. They're asking $749,000 for this house, Joe. What's the next question I'm going to get from them? What would they pay? What? I've never heard that. <laughs> People actually say that? What, what would they take? So what's the response? The only number I know that they exist, but we have to present any number we want you to. No! That's not the response. How much would you like to pay for it? What would you like to offer? Or the response should be, are you willing to buy the house today if they took less? Would you be willing to buy the house today if they took less? You're off your answer. Would, would, you, would you buy the home today if they took less? You're writing that down, Scott. You should. Because guess what they'll say? Joe, would, well, would you buy the house if they would, would you buy the house if they took less? What's your answer? Make an offer. So I bought a house three years ago. Personal story. Bought a house three years ago. So I'm not gonna, I probably, I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. To make a long story short, see this house asking X amount of dollars. Like it. My, my kids liked it. Never happened in my life. The ki my kids like something I like. That doesn't happen. My kids like this house. So I said to the broker, he calls me up the next day. He actually called me up the next day. He actually followed up with me. And he, and he said, so what do you think of the house? Blah, blah, blah. I said, I really like the house, yada, yada, yada. But he says, well, you know, why don't you make why don't you make an offer? I go, well, that's novel. He must have came one of my classes. Huh? Make an offer. I said, oh, I don't want to make an offer. It's, it'd be ridiculous. I don't want to embarrass myself or embarrass you or give you some stupid offer. He says, no, give me an offer. Give me a stupid offer. I gave him a stupid offer. He says, are you crazy? No, he didn't say that. He said, I'll present it. So it went from a stupid offer to now I own a house because what I thought was a stupid offer was not far off what the seller was, was willing to take that he knew about and we made a deal. But if he never called me back and if he never asked me to make an offer, never would happen, never would have happened. So if you take anything away from this morning, ask your clients to make an offer. Remember, go back a couple of slides. Oh, go back one slide. People buy what they want. Show them what they want. And in this market, in this market, you can make an offer. And then you can make a deal. That's what a deal maker will do. You'll make deals that you, no one else will make simply by asking, make an offer. As crazy as it may sound. But the question is, you like the home, Joe? Yeah. Would you, are you interested in buying it? We can role play this. Does anybody ask that question anymore? Because a year ago, no one asked that question because you would just write an offers, you met them at the parking lot, took them to the house, wrote an offer, threw it out there, and maybe it came back. Okay, now you have to make deals. So ask the question, do you like this home? Is this home for you? Would you like to buy it? I would, but it's blah, blah. And you work it, you handle it. Well, if I can get it for less, are you interested? If I can get it for less, would you go forward with the deal? Would you go forward buying it? Yes, no, no, not the home for you. Move on to the next one. Okay, but you'll know. Today, make an offer. People are making deals today because they're making offers. When you start to see list price and sales prices, if you go, if when you're going to stay, see the list price is this and the sales prices are here. Okay, big difference between list. Remember how a year and a half ago, this was the list price and this was the sales price? Listed for $749, sold for $835.
now listed for 749, sold for 682. It's flipped. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Maybe not immediately, but today you can make deals. Scott would never make that deal two years ago. Guaranteed. Right, Scott? Absolutely. There you go. You have to make deals, blah, blah, blah. You want sales? Just ask. Simple as that. This used to say you want listings. Just ask. You want sales? Ask. Russ, you like the house? Yeah, I know you like the house. You want to move forward with it? Yeah, okay. You guys are so easy. You know that doesn't happen in real life. All right? But you, just ask. Just ask. Make an offer. Okay? Now, those of you out in Zoom land say, well, we represent the seller and we're supposed to get him the most money for the house. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that. I represent sellers all the time. I want to do the best thing for my seller, but they hired me to sell the house. Didn't they hire you to sell the house? So you're certainly representing the seller and you're never going to tell the seller, don't take any, any offer you don't want. But so far we've had none. So make an offer. Let's make a deal. And I know that's kind of like basic, but I think we got to get back to that because I think we lost a lot of that. And as far as the market goes, the market's going to, it's going to be what it is. And it's not going to be as drastic as the headlines are. Remember what I said when I first opened up, mortgage rates should not stop you from buying a home. So real quick, and then I'm going to turn over to you guys. Okay. But everyone says I should wait. That's the genius advice that they're getting. Maybe I'll wait till what? To what? Rates come down. Maybe I'll wait till rates come down. What other advice are people getting today? Nobody's getting it. Buyers aren't getting any advice. All right. What are the buyers thinking today? Price down. Price down. I'll just wait for prices to come down. Hmm. Spanky, right? <laughs> Spanky's still waiting. Still waiting. Uh, let me go back. So here's what would cost you. So uh, I'm going to just move quick. Hold on a second. I got to this a second. Let's take the long view on this. Okay, let's take the long view. If you're buying a home to live in, you're probably going to live in it for three years, four years, 10 years. All right. Does anybody here buy homes and live in them for six months, a year, and then move out again? Most people today <laughs> buy homes because they want stability, they want something their own, and they want it for the long haul, right? Correct? So let's look at the long view and people should look at this. Remember what we said earlier, the price is the price period. You pay for it. That's locked. The mortgages, why should I wait for rates to come down? <clears throat> They're always going to, you can always refinance. You can always change it. You can always take money. You can always do that, but lock it in today because if you, if you, if you wait, there's a lot of things that are going to happen that, that you're going to miss. And if you take the long view on the business, which people should, but they don't remember, they don't remember Saturday's headlines, do you? You have to explain it to them. This is the long view. So I went back. I'll make it all go on now. Uh, no, okay. So I went back. I'm a little ahead of myself here. And if you waited three years, if you bought a home three years ago, this is the result of that average home in Nassau County three years ago. The average home in Nassau County three years ago was 27% less than it is today. You would have made 27% on that investment if you look at it as an investment, plus all the other factors that came come about with home. That equates to $140,000. Okay? You want to wait? You may lose. If you bought a home three years ago because you didn't like what was going on three years ago because there was a pandemic coming, you lost $140,000 on the average in Nassau County. 27% appreciation rate three years ago. You're going to wait? I don't know. Maybe wait five years. I didn't go back five years. 
But don't you wish you would have bought a home five years ago? Three years ago? Okay, there's no point in waiting. Waiting is not economically, doesn't make economic sense. There's never a bad time, never a bad time to buy real estate on Long Island, ever. Ask the people who came back from the war. Ask the people who bought a home 10 years ago. This is only three years ago. Okay, so maybe prices will come down a little bit. So maybe you'll go down, maybe you'll lose 3% now this year. Do you have anything else, any other investment that does this well? You look at your IRAs today? You look at any other? You have any other investment three years return 27%? I don't know, maybe you have. That you could live in and raise your family? There's nothing. But you have to point this out to people because everyone's telling them, wait till rates come down. Wait till prices come down. Now's not the time. So they're going against all their experts telling them, don't buy now. Prices are coming down. I saw the headlines. Buy, you know, hold off. Rates are going to come down as soon as we get a new president. This is what happens. This is just one aspect of waiting. Okay. I went too long. I'm going to cut this short. Any any comments on anything so far? Any comments? Questions? No? You have to be a deal maker. Another word for being a deal maker is a salesperson. Okay. They're hiring you to be a salesperson, not a clerk. Be a salesperson. If they take less, Joe, would, would you be interested in buying the house? No. If they want to take less, make make an offer. So with that, once you get that offer, Joe Ferraro, the cross country, will get you a mortgage. Joe, you want to come on up? Thank you. Great job. Great job. Good morning, everybody. I don't know how to follow that. That was such a great presentation. Um, <laughs> But a lot, of, a lot of what Bart was talking about, um, I agree 100% pretty much with everything he said. The one key to remember is it is all about supply and demand. It has nothing to do with rates. Nothing to do with rates. And everybody seems to think, like Bart was saying, everybody seems to think the rates, when the rates come down, when the rates come down, when the rates come down, it has nothing to do with rates. And everything that Bart showed you on that one thing, the national news, remember, it's national news, Okay. So everything that's going horrifically wrong in California, they add that into the mix and make it seem like it's happening all over the place. It's not happening here on Long Island. And if you remember, I think it was two months, maybe three months ago, um, when I had given a presentation about the federal funds rate, how the economy works, why interest rates go up. Remember, I had a slide in there that since 1972, housing prices have gone up every year since 1972, okay? During that time, there was five or six recessions. Housing prices still went up since 1972. The only year it didn't go up was 2008. Why? Because there was tremendous supply and not enough demand. Exactly what's going on in California right now. If you remember the bubble, the big burst, the economy, we had everything, the market crash. It was a different situation, right? Back then, the situation was that there were so many foreclosures. Why? Because in the late uh, 1990s and the early 2000s, what do we have? We had no income, no asset mortgage. You had somebody that's renting a basement apartment for $500 a month, and now we're giving them a $600,000 mortgage. They had all these programs out there for people who really didn't qualify, right? Think about that. You're buying a $600,000 home, no income, no asset. But because you had the down payment, you could buy it. Or I love the other one, stated income. I can make up whatever income I want. That guy's making, oh, yeah, they work in a bakery. They're, 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 they're doing bagels. But they make $150,000 a year. I guarantee you that. These are the type of mortgages that were given out. Wall Street didn't care. They were making a ton of money. Everybody, anybody ever saw the movie, The Big Short? If you didn't, watch it, okay? You want to learn about the housing crisis and the market and what happened, watch The Big Short. Now, that's different from what's going on today, okay? 
But that was the only time since 1972 that housing prices went down. Okay. So it doesn't matter what rates are going, where they're going. Bart was correct again. People buy what they want, not what they need. You see it all the time. They say it, consumers are never satisfied. They always want what somebody else has. It's biblical. It says that man will never be satisfied. It's scripturally in the Bible, right? How many people go out and buy that iPhone 10? And they already have 11, 12, and 13 ready to roll out, right? You don't even use a tenth of the apps on your phone. But somebody gets the 11 and shows you, and you're like, oh, my God, I got to get that phone, right? You just spent $1,500 on a phone that you didn't need, but you wanted it. And then somebody else comes and shows you the next version, and all of a sudden, you can't wait to get rid of your phone. It's the same thing with TVs. It's the same thing with cars. Again, they're marking up sticker prices anywhere from three to $10,000 more than the sticker price on a car. And people are still paying it because they want what they want. So the buyers will buy a house because that's what they want, okay? Don't listen to anybody. And it's your job to say that rates have nothing to do you know, with what's going on in the economy about buying and selling houses, okay? And I'll tell you this right now with the rates, they're going up again. Trust me, I'm a mortgage banker. I've been doing this for 33 years. And we've been through four turns. It always seems like every 10 years, 12 years, something happens to the economy, right? It readjusts itself, reevaluates. Why? Because the rich want to be richer, right? So let's bring everything down because you only can make so much money for so long. Then you got to bring it back down again so everybody can make more money again. That's, that's my own feeling about everything. I've been in finance my whole life. Uh, I always feel it's money-driven. Every decision in this world is money-driven. But right now, the Fed is going to raise rates another 75 basis points. Now, smart banks like Cross Country, we have analysts that we speak to on Wall Street. And I always say, you know, uh, MBS Highway, it's another website to go to. And you should try to see if you want to enroll in that. Barry Habib is probably about 80, 85% right about what's going to happen with rates. We get alerts all the time. Uh, he's in tune to the market. Um, so a smart bank is going to start raising their rates slowly anyway. They're not going to wait for the Fed to say, uh, raising the cost of funds rate, 75 basis points. And also we're going to jack up our rates in one day, 75 basis points. You start to see a slow increase constantly. The smart banks will do that. Um, but I will tell you right now, I don't believe in BS in anybody. These are difficult times, and, and, but it's during difficult times that there's growth. And let me explain that, right? Two, three, four years ago on the mortgage banking side, we had rates were so low, you couldn't get out of the way of mortgage. My 89-year-old grandmother could sell a mortgage, and she didn't need to know the products. The rates were so low. All she had to do was signed the application and she was making money, okay? Realtors, houses selling left and right, the, the, like Bart said, 27% higher, 30% higher. You know, list price 600, you're selling the house for 700. It was easy. Well, today, they're saying that 40% of the mortgage loan losses will be out of the industry within six months. They're also saying the same thing about real estate agents, okay? Because the people like Bart and Fern and some of you who've been here around a long time, you're the ones that are going to make it because you've been through the ups and downs, okay? You know what it takes to sell a house. You know what it takes to get a buyer to buy a home, okay? That's what your experts are. We know what it takes to give a rate and mortgage products to make it. But all those people who had just came in when things were good and they were making money left and right, they don't know how to sell. You know, we just came back from another uh, convention and they were saying that this is where the rubber hits the road, as they say, hits the pavement, because all those people on, on our side that were doing refinances, and that's all they did, it was 90% of their business, they're definitely going to be out because they didn't build a relationship with a realtor on purchase side. And even the ones that came in late in the game that have been enjoying all this, but they don't know how to sell, but they had a friend or a family member that was in, um, real estate that was just sending them the deals, they don't know how to sell. They said that people have forgotten how to pick up a phone and sell on the phone. And that's both on the real estate side and the mortgage side. You got to remember, we're partners. 
We are partners. And the reason why we're partnering with you, we could have signed an MSA agreement with anybody. We love the way Bart and Fern run the office, the camaraderie. I love everything Fern does on the charity side because I do some stuff, nothing compared to her. She's amazing. The way you guys all coordinate and work together, the family atmosphere, that's how it is at Cross Country. And if you look at Cross Country, we're the fastest growing lender since 2003. We went from nothing to being the third largest mortgage, non-bank mortgage lender, and in the top eight. You don't do that in 20 years unless you're a good organization. We're run, we are run well from the top down. And in our branch alone, the one that has the MSA, Bruce Silva's got 36 years in the industry, impeccable, impeccable um, um, reputation. Same thing with Eric Bueller, Ralph Ranieri, myself. And then we pass it on the same way Bart and Fern pass, pass on all the information to you and train you guys. We train our loan officers to be exactly like us. If they don't sell and do what we want, they're not with us. But here's one thing I will say before I get into my presentation. I'm at the screen is not working. So um, when it comes to um, the relationship, this is what I tell everybody. Picture a two, two lane highway, right? Real estate agents, stay in your lane. Do what you do best. Mortgage bankers, we stay in our lane. We do what we do best. I've seen, I've done a lot of open houses where I've heard real estate agents trying to talk about rates in the markets. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're actually scaring potential buyers. That's when you say, Joe's here. I, I had an open house with, with uh, Fern's sister and, and Marcy, and we worked so well together. I greeted the clients at the door, brought them over, had them sign all the forms, explained to them, gave them the material on the house, handed it over to the real estate agent. When they tried to ask me questions about the house, these are the experts. When they tried to ask Fern's sister about uh, mortgages, she said, speak to Joe. That's what's supposed to be done. If I'm not around, you're talking to a borrower or one of my loans is not around, a potential buyer or even a listing agent. Tell them to call me because you could actually talk yourself out of a deal. Okay. And again, now going back to rates, rates are going up. They're going to continue to go up. All right. But again, as Bart said, people buy what they want, not what they need. We have people back in February saying, well, I'm going to wait. Because I know as the rates continue to go up, housing prices are going to go down. And every month I call the same potential buyers and I say, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Because it just went up another 10%, the values of the houses. Of oh, the sales price, you know that house that you wanted for 600000 You said you're going to wait until the rates go down? Well, rates have gone up. And guess what? That house sold for 700000 You could have had it for 600000 that $100,000 increase, let's say it was still available, that $100,000 increase today will cost the buyer $700 or more a month today versus if you got it four months ago. So Bart's right. Don't wait. People say to me, when's the best time to buy a house? I said, yesterday. And they said, well, no, no, Joe, when's the best time to a house? I said, okay, today. Well, I can't buy it today. So when's the best time? Tomorrow. Not a year from now, two years from now. And nobody has a crystal ball. We all believe this is what's going to happen. Rates are going to continue to go up until the end of the year, maybe even the first quarter of the year. We have reason to believe that they're going to, the companies are going to start having layoffs. Okay. That's, let's call it what it is. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. The reason why nothing's being done right now is because why? We have the midterms. Okay. You're going to see everything go through the roof, regardless of what happens in the Senate and the House, who's in charge, who's not in charge. These gas prices, oil prices, everything's going to go through the roof. And I tell, my, I tell my clients, did you go out this weekend to a restaurant? Yeah. How much was your bill? Oh, man, it was $480, Joe. Normally, it cost me $225, $480. You had a good bottle of wine, good meal, right? You had a good time, right? Yeah. Did you go to the supermarket and buy food for your house, for your kids? Yeah, I did. Your kid's still playing ball. They're still doing swimming lessons to say, yeah, but everything's so expensive. The point is, are you still doing it? Are you going to stop eating because food prices are up? 
Are you going to stop driving your car to go to work because gas prices are up? Are you going to make your pipes freeze in the wintertime because oil prices are so high, you refuse to pay that amount, so you're not going to put heat in your house? The answer is no. So why should they wait to buy a house? This is the time to buy a house. Every day you wake up, that's the day to buy the house, to sell the house. That's the day for me to give a mortgage to somebody. So now we have a way to help you sell a house quicker, okay, and deal with this rate issue. We have a, a way to be able to help buyers buy the house, okay? So I'm going to talk about a couple of programs now that we have. So the three things I want to talk about today is that we have these buy-down programs, which I'm going to show you an example of them. So Joe, Joe what's a buy-down program? We have a way that we could buy down the rate today to a much lower rate that A, makes it affordable and attractive to the buyer. B, allows the seller to sell their house quicker, okay? And they, we have four different options, which I'm going to get into. Arms, what are arms? Adjustable rate mortgages. These are the times to sell these adjustable rate mortgages because they could be a full two points lower than what a 30-year fixed is. So if, if, if a rate was seven and a half on a 30-year fix, it could be five and a half on an adjustable, a seven one R, which means it's fixed for seven years. And generally people refinance every five to seven years. So the whole idea that we're selling to our buyers is look, you're locked in for seven years. Seven years, you're locked in at a much lower rate because they're like, well, suppose the rates don't drop as fast as they, they should. You're right. People are saying they're going to drop in two years. It could take four years for the rates to get down to the level that you want to save you a ton of money. They're going to go down because the same way I told you that housing prices continue to go up even to all the recessions, okay? When a recession is announced, the only way to combat a recession is to lower rates. It may not go as fast, but I tell bars, well, what do you care? You're locked in for seven years. Seven years, you're locked in. And then we have this lock before you look. I can't express enough how this is so important. You got a potential buyer today. They're freaking out about rates. You send them to us. We give them a commitment letter. Within 48 hours, 72 hours tops, we lock their rate in. If it takes them 90 days to find a house, they're locked in for 90 days. Who else is giving you that? So they can, when they hear that the rates went up three quarters of a point, they don't have to panic because they're already locked in with us. So we'll get into that as well. All right, so we have four temporary buy-down options, and I'm going to get into how we, how we work things out. This is save 1% for one year. So we have the one for zero, one for one, two for one, and the three, two, one. So what does that mean? I'm going to use the three, two, one as a perfect example because that's my favorite. Let's say today the rate is 7.5%. That's the par rate or the, the going rate right now, the prevailing rate. We will put that bar up in a 4.5% rate. There's no rate available and out there at 4.5%. But what we do is it's called the buy-down. 7.5% is the real rate. We qualify them off of that. But in year one, we give them a 4.5% rate. In year two, we give them a 5.5% rate, so it goes up. Year three, we give them a 6.5%. By year four, now they go off to 7.5%, but they have three years of savings. And you say, Joe, how can I do that? Okay. Here's a perfect example of if it's a 7% rate. In year one, we're going to save them $8,000 in, in interest. Year two, we're saving them $4,000. That's $12,000, $12,120 that we're going to save them. Tell me that's not attractive to a buyer, right? So you say, well, how does that help the listing age, uh, the, the, the listing uh, person who's selling the home? How does that help the homeowner um, who wants to sell out a house fast? And how do you make up that money? Who's paying that? So the seller pays that, okay? So what happens is instead of the seller having to drop their price, and you want to sell that house for $700,000, and they're like, you know, I'm getting nervous. I want to drop this down to 675 because I'm, I'm worried I'm not going to get it. Think about this. Now you just lost a little of your commission, right? And they had to drop the price, which never makes them feel good. And it makes it look like you didn't do your job, right? 
But now we keep it at the 700,000. They take a portion of that and they're willing to pay that to move the house. And here's a beautiful thing from the buyer side too. Let's say after year one, the borrower saves $8,000 and then year two, they refinance and they don't use that $4,000. I'm able to take that $4,000 and put it to their closing costs on a refinance. See the benefit to this loan? You're able to sell the house without dropping the price significantly. The seller's willing to pick it up because he wants to move that house. You don't have to worry about the rate, right? Because they're worried, oh, rates are going up. I'm never going to sell this house. Yes, you are. Because we're going to do this program. And we don't have to do it three to one. We could do it two to one. Maybe, maybe our client, the buyer, is willing to do two years because he's confident that the rates are going to be down in two years. And your seller is willing to do the two years and absorb the two years of costs. Right. But again, it's just an amazing product. And I will tell you that um, I always get the name wrong. Uh, the builder, is it Tucci? I always get that. Okay. So we are in contract with him right now. He has, I think it's 35 houses that he's building and he has 10 already built. And we went over this program with him. He says, I'm absorbing all the costs. I, I, I'll do that program. I want to sell these houses because they're sitting there. So now Bruce was going to come today, but he's over there working on this with them because he was like, are you kidding me? I'll take that every day. I'll absorb that $12,000 cost and just sell, sell the houses and you'll be able to save the borrowers money. And, and again, it's two to 3% below what the prevailing rate is today. It's a phenomenal program. And this is one that we did after four years. This is just showing an example of somebody were to take that three to one buy down. So here it is again, 7% rate. We give them 4% year one. So we qualify them off to 7%. Year one, they're getting 4%. We haven't had 4% since March. Go ahead. With the previous example, the seller would be paying $12,000 to the finance? Mm -hmm. okay. The seller is correct. If you have a builder, the builder is. Well, it all depends on what the interest rate is. It, it could be 10,000, it could be 11,000. It depends on, on that example, it was the $12,000. Whatever the savings would actually pay as the amount. Correct. Yeah, but let's say we got a bar, a bar that has an 800 FICO score that's putting 20% down. His rate is going to be better than everybody else's because he's got an 800 score, 20% down. So it'll be less coming out of the seller because the rate that we're giving to that bar is going to be lower anyway. And then he's going to take the three to one buy down or the two to one buy down. It all depends on, on the actual buyer and where he qualifies for. If he's somebody that has banged up credit, 625 FICO score, you know, he's going to have a higher rate. So it will be costly, more costly to the, to the, the seller. But, but again, the seller does absorb. Yes, absolutely. So just real quick, that example I think you showed there, what's the cost of that to buy that rate? Well, it's based on the interest rate. So it's based on the savings of interest for that year. That's what it, so there's not a cost like it's a $10,000 cost, a $12,000 cost. If say, I'm going to use just a fake number. So you understand, let's say at a 7% rate, the interest payments for that year were 12,000. Okay. But now at giving them the 4% rate, the interest that he would pay is only 4,000. Right. Okay, that savings is what the seller's going to have to pay. So we would tell you what it is. You know, so I would qualify the buyer and say, hey, if your seller's willing to do this, this is what he's got to come up with. And we would go over the numbers with you. But again, it depends, it depends on the buyer and it depends, depends on the interest. This example is showing you, normally I would give the borrower a 7% rate. But if we go with this program, we're going to give him a 4% rate. That means he's saving $11,000 in interest, which is great for the buyer. That's what your client, your seller's got to pay. If he wants to move that house, um, it's, again, builders are doing it and we're, we're offering out to the seller. So it's not the buyer who pays it. It's either the builder or the, uh, or the seller of the home that pays that. But it assures you a couple of things that you don't have to drop the price of the house significantly, number one, to get it off the market, because it's almost like a seller's concession if you think about it, but it's benefiting both sides. 
right? Um, but it's ensuring that you can keep the price up and it's ensuring that you'll be able to move the product fast. You know, um, again, back to what Bart was saying, rates don't drive anything. But there's still people today, I just spoke to somebody yesterday who thinks that, well, the housing price is going to go down because the rates are going to keep going up. It doesn't work that way. But instead of people being fearful that they can't buy a home, like I, I went and told one of my buyers yesterday this program, and they're 100% in. Now it's a matter of getting the listing agent and the seller on any house that they find to agree to this. But that's your job, right? So we're doing our job in offering the product to you to move the, to move the house fast and not have to drop the price. Because the prices are going to just stabilize. Bart's right. They're not going down. They're not. Again, remember, since 1972, they've gone up every year. They're not going, they're not dropping. If everything crashes and we're in World War III and it's Armageddon, forget about it. We don't even have jobs. So that's not going to happen. The markets won't allow it. Okay. So this is what I was talking about, about the adjustable rates. We have right now, I think on a 7-1 arm, we have an adjustable rate that's 5.75 right now. So the borrower's locked in for seven years. It's 5.75 versus a 7.75. I'm telling you by next week, the rates are going to be in the eights. Okay. So adjustable rate mortgages are going to be two points lower than your fixed rate. And we can, what can we lock them in at? We can lock them in for three years, five years, seven years, or 10 years. I don't waste my time on a 10 year because people are going to refinance anyway in five to seven years. So I don't even offer that. And it's, there's not that much of an improvement. The sweet spot is the seven. You're locked in for seven years. They can breathe easy. And as rates go down, let's say rates take three, four years to go down to a level that they feel comfortable in. They don't care. They're in seven years. And as it keeps going down, and think about somebody who's in a 5.75 and now they refinance at a 3% rate. Think about the monthly savings that they're going to have on that. Or somebody who's at a 7.75 and the rates are in the fours. Think about that savings. It's almost cutting that principal payment in half. You know? Okay, this is again the lock before you look. I was explaining this early. Everybody knows about our fast track program. Our fast track program is that we actually give a commitment without the bar even having a house. So the way the mortgage industry works, client comes to us, we pre approve them, you guys go show them houses. Uh, seller and the agent accept an offer. Then they send us the rest of their docs. Within 72 hours, we have an approval known as a commitment um, because we have a contract in our hand. That's when we truly underwrite the loan. We're actually giving you a commitment on our fast track approval without even having a house. And then we're allowing you to lock for 90 days. So if today the rate is seven and a half and you locked in today and the rates go up to nine in 30 days from now, doesn't matter because you're in at the seven and a half. Yes. So is there a fee? Or yeah, there's a fee. Um, I got to look at it because we actually reduced the fee. Um, and I can let you guys know what that fee is. I think it's, it's either a quarter or a half that you have to pay uh, of a point. Um, but I'll find out what that is and I'll send that out to everybody. Uh, I'm going to be doing videos more. And again, I want to thank um, even a, a Zoom group. Uh, for those who were always checking up on me, I went through a a health scare and I was out for like, you know, 45 days. Normally I would do a video every week or do a presentation, but I was out, but I'm back. I'm healthy. I'm doing great. 22 pounds lighter. Um, and so I'll be doing videos, weekly videos. I promised Fern I would do that today. When we're done, I'm going to go back. I'm going to thank everybody for this. And then I'm going to bring up about what the cost was on that 90 day lock. Okay. Yes. That's right. That's right. You're pushing them now to get that house now. Hey, you only got 90 days on that lock. Hey, you only got 75 days left. You only got 60 days. You know, the rates are two points higher than when you're locked in and at or a point and a half higher. And when you're talking, just know this, for every $1,000 difference in, in a loan, the payment is going up $7, right? So if it goes up $100,000 in the price in the house, that's, that's $700 a month more for the borrower to pay. So you got to put, you press the urgency again, the urgent button, right? Yes. 1% or 1 point of uh, what they qualify for? Is that what, in essence, what it's going to be? You, you're qualifying them for a certain amount. 
certain loan amount. And that's what the point comes from, obviously? Yes, absolutely. Yes, correct. 100%. So let's say we qualify them for a $700,000 loan. That's what it's coming from. Okay. Um, but again, we're offering this. All banks require you to have a contract in, a loan underwritten, and approved because they don't want to waste their time. Because remember, we hedge all our bets, right? You hear about hedge funds, all the stuff like that, with the mortgage-backed securities. So when we lock a loan, we're, we're now taking up space of our warehouse line. We're the mortgage banker. It's our money, all right? But we pay a fee for that warehouse line. It's like having a credit card lo line, right? So when we lock people's loans in, we're, we're taking up space on our warehouse line. We want that thing to move fast. We want it to close fast so we can get it off our books and open up to be able to do more mortgages. So we're willing to do this to help you sell more houses, help you get more buyers buy houses. Like Bart said, we're, we're placing the urgency on them, okay? To, to help them find a home. And, and we gotta get out of this fear mode, okay? Everybody's in this fear mode. Oh my God, rates, gloom and doom, this and that. People are gonna buy what they want, not what they need. And people want a house. And you guys know the various reasons why. Um, let me just see here. A couple of things that I wanted to add again about uh, the relationship. Guys, we are here for you, okay? We're willing to do open houses with you. Um, we're willing to speak to clients at any time. All the realtors, even on a Zoom, I'm getting called Saturday night, which is great. I love it that the realtors that work for this company are calling me Saturday night. You know, I got people calling me late on a Monday night, people that are talking to clients, signing contracts, calling me up. Don't think because we're a bank, we're only interested in the buyers. We're not. You know where we get most of our leads from? The listings. Why? We do the open houses. 20 people come in. They fill out those forms. I take a picture. Guess what? I'm doing pre-approvals for them. If we end up converting them as a buyer, okay, we'll let you know. And then we tell them to utilize you guys to help them find a home. Because most of them are walking in without a realtor. So we're, we're doing all this work to help you guys out too. But a lot of realtors don't utilize us. I'm surprised at the amount of people that don't call me. I expected my phone to be ringing off the wall because I would tell you this, and, and my partners over at the branch will tell you, nobody knows the guidelines better than me. I even know them better than the underwriters. I have the underwriting background. I have a secondary marketing background. I sold these loans to Wall Street. Don't blame me. I had nothing to do with what the collapse, but I sold these loans to Wall Street. I had to know the guidelines. I had to know what tranches to put them in, to sell them, to get premium pricing. I've run the operation. And I decided I'm tired of seeing the salespeople make all the money. So I jumped ship 12 years ago and went into sales. All right? You have no better advocate than me over our cross country. And, and I'm not saying it because I'm friends with Bruce. Uh, you know, we hang out and this and that. I'm friends with Eric and Ralph. They're the best in the industry. You go ask anybody, they, they, nobody will say anything bad about any of the branch managers that run that branch. You won't hear anything bad about me. You won't. Because I'm always going to be there for you. We're in this together. And right now, because of this difficult market, we need to communicate more now than ever before. We need to work together more now than ever before. And you know that the, the equal justice of scale, right? It can't be like this. It can't be one side doing all the work and the other side not. For this relationship to work, we have to work together, communicate together. We're willing to do everything for you guys, everything and anything from the mortgage side, educating your buyers, even speaking to your sellers of the home to calm their fears down. Because Bart's right, they're looking at the news, that chart was perfect with all the, all the different news stations on there. Everything is gloom and doom. And it's Armageddon, World War III start, and it's the end of the world. People are still buying houses because they buy what they want, not what they need. So I'll open up the floor with any questions. If you have no questions, um, you can always email me. Um, I'm Joseph P. Ferraro. You see it here at ccm.com. We shortened the emails finally. It's no longer my CC mortgage. We made it easy now for you guys. Um, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to speak. I can't thank you enough for the partnership. Uh, and I'm looking forward to growing our business together for the end of this quarter and the rest of the new year. So thank you again. I appreciate it. Real quick, a couple, couple quick. Thanks, thanks very much, by the way. Looks good, huh? 
Who's the chubby guy in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, one of the things I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, maybe, is you got to team up. In this business, you, you, you can't do this alone. You got to team up. And, and we're with Cross Country for a couple of reasons. A, what Joe said, the most experienced guys in the business, most honorable guys in the business, they know how to get deals done. They'll get them done. They're part of your team. So you got a whole list of team. People come, they not only want to buy a house, where do I get a mortgage? Where do I get a home inspector? Where do I get a lawyer? So we have that all in place. I'll send you out that slide of who to team up with. Cross Country Mortgage and Joe, Adam Cargo, son, current son, the lawyer, Inspector Corps. We got the whole team lined up waiting for your calls that will help you get your deals done today. That's and get them done correctly. And to add to that, I use Adam on all my closings. Not, not just for the buyer, but also for the banks. So just so you know that. So, um, and he does a phenomenal job. By the way. He's real, you know that. He's, yeah. very, he's very, very thorough. And can I just add one more thing? I forgot to mention, Nick Brackett is here. Nick, just come up here for a sec so everybody can see it. Nick put together a really good presentation of like a rate comparison of why, why the buy now. And he does like a little side-by-side. -side. Nick, if you want to just share with them what he put together, and he's going to be sending that out to you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So uh, very much what Bart and Joe were sharing, uh, you know, there's three things that sell in the world, sex, chocolate, and fear. So the media is really driving fear right now. And I do a side-by-side -side comparison between um, two theoretical buyers who are buying the exact same home. One guy has a 7% interest rate. Now I should probably adjust that. That was prepared a month ago. And somebody's waiting for a 4% interest rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the mortgage math, lay it all out and say, who's going to come out in a more financial advantageous position at the end of that period of time. And just the spoiler alert, um, even taking very conservative numbers, the person who buys today at a 7% interest rate still comes out over $100,000 better by the time you figure in equity and not paying rent and the increase. And, you know, it's um, the fact is, is I tell people, listen, Buying a house is always expensive. Everybody's like, oh man, when the rates were 3%, it's like, yeah, you know what we had? Is we had incredible prices, the inability to, 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 to find anything, you know, and, and now that the rates are higher, guess what? You don't have to offer $50,000, $100,000 over. So, so it's all about educating people and trying to get people who are on the fence to say, wow, you know what? It is actually a better time than, than waiting. So um, I will be sending out an email. Um, it's just gonna be probably like a 30 minute webinar as well. So if you have any potential buyers, people are like, you know, I don't really know uh, if I wanna do this. I really wanna be able to sell that and say, uh, listen, here's very conservative numbers that, that show that it is actually a better time to buy rather than wait. It's a great slideshow. I heard that went over and he did a great job. I know he's not from New York, that's why he's from Tennessee, okay? <laughs> but that's how much he loved us. He came all the way from, no, his wife's from New York, so that's why he's here. But but love you, Nick. He did a great job with this presentation. I went over it, and uh, he's passionate about education. And as you can see, he's also a physique coach. He's helping me with my physique. Uh, he's certified in it. Um, the guy knows everything about nutrition, everything to do with health. So if you want to get healthy, talk to Nick too. But uh, Bart, you could just finish. No, you were all done. Okay. But, but again, we thank you for the partnership. We're looking forward to supporting it. And again, we have amazing loan officers in this. So if you're already talking to a loan officer, continue to talk to them. They know what they're doing. If they don't get back to you, I'm the guy with the whip. You come after me and I'll, I'll, I'll straighten them out. But if you don't have a loan officer, I produce on my own, okay? I'm a top producer. Come to me and I will make sure Bruce and I on our team will take care of you. Thank you. Have a blessed day.